Hey guys, well Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you all had a great time and a great holiday. I certainly had a nice time. Uh, my younger boy who was here flew back last night um, and I have the rest of this week off and then I'm back, back to the day job next week. So uh, plenty of eating and drinking, eating some nice candy, the grown-up stuff. Um, <laughs> And lots of drinking and stuff and playing guitars and listening to shortwave and uh, planning upgrades to the shortwave installation and all that sort of stuff um, also a couple of tasks have been uh, hanging around for a while like um, sharpening up some of the tools for the woodworking side of things so I got some of that done um, also, I've uh, been trying to sort out an overhead camera for the bench, so I'll give you an update on that. And of course, I have spent a little bit of time messing around with the scope. So I promise not to bore you to death with the scope every time. Um, from here on in, just when I make some sort of progress. But I'll give you like a status report, because uh, there have been developments. I think they're positive. Um, so when it comes to uh, fitting the overhead camera uh, to the bench, I didn't have a lot of success with that hero. Um, one of the main reasons is monitoring the thing is only doable over wireless and I'm really trying to minimize the amount of wireless anywhere near the uh, the workshop because of potential interference issues. Um, the other major drawback I found with it is I couldn't find a way of doing a zoom and so it's kind of like it's fixed zoom and so I'm sure I'll find other uses for it but it's just not really gonna work um, as an overbench uh, fixed uh, mounted camera so I went for a fairly simple straightforward uh, camcorder this is a JVC something or other yeah I'll just find a way of fitting this up over the bench uh, and we'll be good to go Still working on the scope, obviously, um, and so uh, I promise not to bore you guys in, with this thing forever, um, but every now and then I'll post a little update just so you know <laughs> that I haven't thrown it out. Um, and uh, so I guess the slight change from the last time I posted an update is um, my thinking up to now had been, or up to recently, had been that there was some single fault somewhere um, that was causing the problem and if I could just find a single fault um, all would be well. Um, but then over the holidays I started to think, well given all the problems with the power supply in this thing it's entirely possible that it did if you like what I would call more widespread damage. Um, and so I started going through literally component by component in this trigger amp um, to see what I would find. So I'll give you a, just a very quick summary of uh, what it turned out to be. Okay, so yeah, this will be familiar, I think, to most of you guys by now. This is the latest set of uh, static voltages. I'll uh, put this up on a PDF for anybody who's interested and you can have a look. Um, but basically, um, I went through this entire section literally component by component and what I found was this transistor had basically popped. This one has a specific failure mode along with all its cousins which I'll show you in a moment. So I replaced this guy, I replaced this guy just for fun, I replaced the 4.7 volt zener here. I replaced this resistor because it had showed signs of heating. When I replaced this transistor and this one, this resistor here off the 12 plus 12 volts decided to go and burn itself. And so I've replaced, I'm not quite sure why, but I've replaced that and it seems to be settled. Um, and so the other thing I discovered is there's at least three resistors in this circuit um, where the values in the actual scope are different to what it says in the drawing 
and so this 680 ohms is actually 330, this 1.5 is 820 ohms, and likewise this 1K resistor is 560. I haven't found any other uh, variances. That's not to say they're not there. I'm sure they are. I just haven't found them yet. Um, so having re so essentially, if we go back to history. So this resistor has transistor has been replaced. So is this one, this cap, these two resistors. I took this guy out. He checked out fine. So I just put him back in. Replace this guy. Replace this guy. And the zener and this resistor and this resistor up here. Um, the situation I now have is everything is much more stable and I can actually get output over here I don't think it's enough and it's in a sort of a strange um, mode in order to make it happen so if I set it with the trace in the middle of the CRT of the scope and it's on auto trace so it's you know it's not synced it's not triggered but at least you have a trace um, you have almost no signal at all right here you have signal up to this point here and up to this point here uh, and of course and so it goes off to the CRT but then the other tap off here which is the original problem you get almost nothing right here so since there's almost nothing going in here there's nothing coming out um, however if I go back a little bit in the circuitry to this trim pot right here this is the vertical shift so this is the knob on the front of the uh, panel of the scope which moves the trace up and down on the, um, on, the on the CRT if I adjust this uh, trim pot to move the trace up to the top and move it off the top so you can't actually see the trace anymore as you get right up at the top suddenly I start to get signal over here and uh, so you have a visible signal here it's amplified when it gets over to here but then it's not particularly amplified when it gets the rest of the way but you can definitely see it is rock solid so I'll attempt to show some of this um, and then we can go from there also since I don't really understand how this whole thing works I tried to draw it out in a different way that I might understand it better and it still doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> so having the bases of two transistors just pulled up to 17 volts with a single resistor uh, and then the signal input effectively comes into the emitters of each resistor transistor and the output just goes out from one of the collectors I just don't see what this guy's doing at all how you know how the signal coming in here has any impact on what goes out there I don't see it anyway uh, I'll show you a couple of scope waveforms and I'll show you the failure mode of the transistors so this is the body count uh, so there's three transistors out of this channel and there's two transistors out of the other channel I haven't done the complete walkthrough of channel 2 yet so uh, these are out of channel 1 so I'll show you the failure mode okay so here's what the failure mode looks like on uh, on this transistor as you can see it looks like a transistor you have an emitter base collector with, a, with a, an HFE and everything else but you also have a connection between emitter and collector which looks like another junction um, all of the BF 357's that I've taken out have this failure mode or have this phenomenon um, the new BF 357K's so they're exactly identical NOS to these do not have this they show as a regular transistor with no if you like connectivity between um, collector and emitter Okay, so right here, I'm on the base of uh, what's called TR62, which is not the final stage of um, the output of the trigger amp, it's one stage before. And you can see that on 500 millivolts, this is a, it's not quite 500 millivolts, it's probably 
300 millivolts per division. Um, so it's on 200 millivolts. Oh, it's nearly, um, it's not quite 400 millivolts actually, so it's not too bad. So this is with the trace running right across the middle of the CRT, kind of as you see it here. As I then mess with the vertical trace, the vertical shift of this trace, as I lower the trace towards the bottom of the CRT, you see the signal disappears. As I raise it up, it gets bigger and bigger. Now we have a, a much bigger signal, but the the actual trace on the scope now has completely gone off the top and there's nothing to be seen. <laughs> so, uh, go figure. Go figure. So, that's where I am. It's like a stable situation, but I still don't understand it. Here's something else I've just discovered. I'm not sure how helpful it's going to be, but... Um, this is connected to the output of the trigger amp um, and as you, uh, at the moment the, uh, the scope being repaired is switched off here we go okay you probably saw that the square wave was there for a little while just a fraction so it would seem that when it first powers up conditions are okay and then something immediately dies so uh, another little bit to add to the mix I won't post any more updates on this until I have made a bit of a breakthrough um, but I think it's fair to say that what I've learned here is that there is a reasonable amount of damage done to this trigger amp um, and for instance what I don't know at the moment is since there are two channels whether there's anything in the other channel that I haven't found yet which is affecting this first channel. I've just been focused on one channel for a while. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, I think that's uh, <laughs> that's that. So, yes, um, learning as we go or at least trying to. Um, so yeah, that's it for now guys. Um, more to come. Um, later. <laughs>